Welcome back to my channel after Saquon's amazing performance a few nights ago and really amazing season. Everybody is now talking about if he can be the NFL MVP or not. In today's video, I'll go over if it is realistic and if not him, who will win. Before I get into the video, please consider liking and subscribing for more NFL content, but back to the video. Yes, I do know that Saquon has been absolutely amazing this year and in my opinion, the best player in the NFL this season. I am, of course, an Eagles fan. Might make it me a little biased, but I do think it is slightly unlikely for Saquon to be the MVP. Oh my God, no, don't tell me everything. What? No! So first off, we have to look at the history of this award. There have only been five positions to win NFL MVP. Kicker, funny story, has actually won the MVP once. Defensive linemen and linebackers won it once. Running backs have won it 18 times, and then quarterbacks have won it 47 times. Notably, no wide receivers have ever won it. But of those 18 times a running back has won the MVP, none have happened since 2012 when Adrian Peterson won it. Of course, since then, we've had 12 straight years of quarterbacks winning this award. So that alone shows that it is pretty tough for a non-quarterback to win this award, especially today. But I thought I would dive a little bit deeper into it. So over the past 10 years, since 2014, I looked into each MVP race and saw, well one, was this a close race? And then, more importantly, was a running back, wide receiver, or other position other than the quarterback actually close at all to becoming the MVP? And to be honest, the answer is no. There, there was never a time when the running back or anything else was that close. But there were a handful of times where they would get second or third. For example, in 2023, Christian McCaffrey, he had an amazing season. He finished third in the voting. In 2021, Everyone remembers Cooper Cup had the triple crown of receiving. He was third in the voting behind Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, and that was probably the closest a wide receiver has ever been to winning this award. In 2017, Todd Gurley was actually second for this award behind Tom Brady, and in 2014, J.J. Watt was second and DeMarco Murray was third. Of course, J.J. Watt had one of the best defensive seasons ever, However, the team was terrible. Kind of hurt him, but he wasn't going to win it anyways. Aaron Rodgers won it, throwing for 38 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. So, clearly, the past 10 years haven't won it, and it hasn't been that close. But, this year might be different, and I'll tell you why. The last time a running back won this award, it was Adrian Peterson. He got over 2,000 yards. He was within a few yards of the all-time rushing record and he was clearly the engine behind that offense. So Saquon Barkley has to do the same thing. The Eagles this year have actually ran the ball more than they have passed it. Therefore, of course, Saquon is the engine of this offense. But more importantly, he is on pace to beat the all-time rushing record. I do not think it's going to happen. I I don't see it happening. It's a lot. It's 2,100 yards. Saquon is on pace for it, given he does get an extra game in a 17-game year. But I think whether, unfortunately, an injury or just game script, saving him for the playoffs, maybe resting him the last game of the year, I just don't think he's going to get to 2,100 yards. He may get to 2,000, and honestly, in today's NFL, a 2,000 yards rusher is incredibly impressive, and that might be enough to get him the award. But I can promise you, if he gets under 2,000 rushing yards, he does not stand a chance. This, it's just not going to happen. So that's what it kind of comes down to for him. And in case you want to track how Saquon's doing so far through 11 games, so he has six more, he has 1,392 rushing yards, averaging 126 rushing yards per game. 
So to get to 2,000, he has to average about 100 rushing yards per game and play every game. Of course, if he misses the last game of the year, that's a huge setback and he needs to do so much more each game. It does sound possible, I just, I'm just a little wary of it actually happening. But he does have one thing going for him this year and there's actually a significant media push going on for him to win it. However, most media pushes of players to win MVPs that occur in November kind of fade away and someone else ends up winning. But if Saquon Barkley does not win the MVP, then who will? So Vegas has the favorite as Josh Allen. He's been absolutely excellent this year. He has the Bills at 9-2, of course. And this is without very many weapons. It seems like they got rid of Diggs. They didn't really replace him with that much. And the offense is still looking very good. They have a 106 point differential so far. One of the best teams in the NFL, very clearly because of Josh Allen. You take him off the team, and they might be 2-9 and nine <laughs> instead of 9-2. and two. Second place, of course, is Lamar Jackson. They are 8-4, and four, and I think that could easily hurt his MVP chances because the record's not going to be that great. There's a decent chance they lose the division to Pittsburgh. Typically, MVP winners win their division or are even the best team in the NFL. But, especially the first half of the year, he's put on an absolutely amazing performance, and his passing game has actually been probably the best it's ever been. His rushing is a little less, but his passing is probably the best it's ever been. Third place, of course, is Saquon, and then fourth is Jared Goff. Jared Goff has been extremely efficient this year. One of the most efficient quarterbacks ever. It's, he had the game with a 100% completion rate and almost 300 passing yards. That's been amazing, other than his game with two touchdowns and five interceptions. I do think that will mess up his stats some. I don't think he's that likely to win it because he has so many weapons around him. It's kind of like Jalen Hurts, but it seems like people give him even less credit than they would give Jalen Hurts because Jalen Hurts at least runs the ball. And then to round out the top five, you're not going to like this, but it is Patrick Mahomes. And I actually think Patrick Mahomes has a very good chance to somehow win this year's MVP. They're in a great chance to be the number one AFC team. And the past four weeks, three of them, Patrick Mahomes has thrown three touchdowns. So he's actually heating up on the stats side to go with all the wins. Wow. So those are the five most likely people to win this award. It could very easily be any one of them. And then there's two more that I think are slight possibilities. That is Justin Herbert and Jalen Hurts. If the Eagles don't lose another game, or maybe even just lose one, get the number one seed in the NFC, Jalen Hurts continues to play how he has since the bye, and Saquon, I guess, falls off a bit. I could easily see Jalen Hurts taking over the MVP spot. And then Justin Herbert, of course, he's so talented. And the team is really good. This team can catch fire. And if they are a top two seed in the AFC, I could easily see Justin Herbert winning the MVP. However, losing to Lamar on Monday night does hurt his chances. Other than those seven guys, I don't really see anyone else who can do it. You might say Joe Burrow, but Joe Burrow's team has lost way too many games. Baker Mayfield is actually kind of up there in the rankings, but they've lost too many games as well. Jordan Love, uh, they've lost a handful. I guess if they get hot, he could win it as well. But it's a wide open field, and I can confidently say the MVP ballot at the end of the year, the MVP race, going into week 18 will look completely different than what it was now. The top five will not be in the same order at all, and a few people could easily drop out of the top five. So what are your thoughts? Who do you think will be the MVP? Do you think Saquon Barkley can be the MVP? Like, subscribe, and I will see you later.